Hi there. Okay, so this week I wanted to talk about gifted kids. So even if you think your kids aren't gifted, listen anyway, because there'll be lots of goodies in here for you. Um, but I have this crazy checklist where, and it's, it's not at all diagnostic. It's not 100%. It's just my own kind of checklist that I run through. And if I see these clusters of behaviors, I suspect giftedness and I'll often tell the family or suggest to the family if they want to, to go and get their child tested, particularly if they think their child would do better in a, a specialized class. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Colary. I'm a child and family therapist and a parenting coach and the founder of Connected Parenting. And welcome to the Connected Parenting Weekly Podcast. Join me every week and we'll tackle everything from temper tantrums to bedtime to sibling issues to teenage angst. Parenting can be so wonderful, but it can be so hard. Parents often say to me, hey, can you just come live at my house? This is the next best thing. Let's do this together. Let me run through the checklist with you. So the, the, here, here's the first one. Um, is your child incredibly curious? So if your child is really curious and they just know a lot of facts about things, they wanna know everything and they retain a lot of knowledge, uh, that's question one. Question two um, is do they have really big feelings? Do they just nosedive? They could be building something, they could be in a very good mood, all of a sudden something doesn't work and I hate my life. This is the worst day of my life. Nothing ever works for me. They have these catastrophic reactions um, to things that don't go well. Number three, uh, do they prefer the company of adults? Do they sort of butt their way in and want to be part of adult conversations all the time and sort of see themselves as equals to adults? Uh, four, are they obsessed with rules and justice and fairness and, you know, I don't think you should park there, mom. Are you sure you should park there? I'm not sure this is okay. They, they sort of parent as they police a lot of people. They will call out peers um, and siblings if they think they're breaking the rules. They'll break their own rules sometimes, but um, they're certainly the, the uh, keeper of the rules. Um, and they also, well, I guess this would be the next one. Um, they also uh, are, are sort of obsessed with um, whether things have been delivered fairly. So there was a time six months ago where you promised me a donut and you still haven't given it to me. They have like an iron trap kind of memory where they remember absolutely everything. Um, I've lost track of the numbers, so I'm just gonna ask the questions now. So let's see, another one. Um, oh, this is kind of a weird one. Will they wear jeans? Many, many gifted kids will not wear jeans. And they have trouble with bumps in their socks and they don't like tags and they freak out about textural things, but jeans in particular they will not wear. Gifted girls awesome are a night, uh, often sorry, are a nightmare to get dressed in the morning. They, whatever outfit you pick, it isn't right and they might have picked it the night before and now they don't like it anymore and it, it's usually a, a quite an ordeal to get them ready in the morning. Boys aren't usually as picky, although there's very specific pieces of clothing they don't like to wear. They, um, another one is sometimes they're very strange about seasonal changes, like if it's time to wear a coat or um, it's, you know, maybe it's warm enough for a t-shirt, they're not sure. What if they're the only one that's wearing the t-shirt or the, the, the coat and no one else is? They get very um, uh, hyper-focused on that and very anxious about that. Uh, sometimes they won't wear new shoes to school. It's, it's, you know, what if, I don't want anyone to see my shoes or haircuts, they can be very strange about haircuts. Um, one of the other questions is will, you know, how were they when they learned to ride a bike? So a lot of um, gifted kids have um, an anticipatory fear of hurting themselves and, and they're actually, it's not a coordination issue usually, it's just an incredible fear of falling. In combination with they look at things and think they should be so easy, well, I'm gonna be amazing at that, I'm gonna be, that's gonna be so easy and then they get on the bike and it's really difficult to balance and they have a really hard time. So a lot of things that have balance, where you actually need to practice it, they struggle with. So skating, they're often better skiers than skaters. Um, they have a really um, low pain threshold. So getting a Band-Aid off, going to the dentist, getting a splinter out, um, that can be epic for them. They just freak out and it's an anticipatory anxiety of pain. Um, usually when they're really hurt, they're actually not that bad. It's like little pain that they freak out about. Um, so what are the other things? Uh, so, uh, okay, so are they really nasty to their siblings? So they will, they have a very strong sense of, of um, 
uh, sort of revenge, I guess, is the best way to put it. You know, if somebody said something, they will like zing them back twice as hard and be like, wow, that's because, and they had it coming and they deserved it. They have, they are uh, quite common for them actually to be, you know, 10 times as nasty in retaliation. And they really struggle. They really, really struggle when you try to tell them, you know what, sweetie, that doesn't make sense. You were so much meaner to your sister there. Or you were so much harder on your brother. And they have a really difficult time with it. That one's a sticky one. That one actually takes a while um, to get better at. They often uh, wake up between 12 and 3 up to the age of about 8, uh, frequently in the night, often in either night terrors or just very angry. Sometimes they're awake but just angry. Um, they are absolute nightmares when they're hungry. It's the, they're either really uh, angry when they're hungry or they get very nose talky, like, oh, that's never gonna work. Like they just kind of fall apart when they're hungry and they have no idea that they're hungry. So you, you have to institute the three bite rule. Make sure they're having three bites of a protein every hour and a half to two hours, that will really help. Um, and they're not good at knowing when they're hungry. A lot of gifted boys, girls too, but particularly boys, will have accidents. It's not unusual for it to be peeing their pants at eight, nine, 10, even 11. And part of that is they're so into whatever they're doing. They're so fascinated with what they're doing that um, paying attention to bodily functions is boring. And if they do make it to the bathroom, it's just in time or that's, that's how the accidents actually happen. Um, they're usually extremely picky with food like really picky, like textures, you know, if a rogue piece of lettuce lands somewhere where it shouldn't, there's gagging and overreacting involved with food. Um, as little kids, they are prone to stress fevers, so they'll just kind of get a fever and then not get sick, and you'll think, that's kind of weird, why is that happening? And part of that is they're, they're just so exquisitely uh, sensitive to their environment that they'll often get stress fevers. Also, have a really difficult time with practice. Practicing anything is incredibly boring. They find it insulting. They roll around on the floor. They'll often say it's too hard. It's not because it's too hard. It's because it's boring or redundant. And they absolutely hate that. They get super offended if they think something is too easy or if they haven't understood something. Um, they have a very strange relationship with effort. So typical kids tend to see effort as a good thing, as a positive thing, as a a sign of strength and intelligence. Gifted kids will often see effort as a threat to their intelligence. If they have to work hard at something, then that must mean they're not as smart as they think they are. And so they often will leave things to the very last minute, kind of sabotage themselves a little bit. Well, I'll just, I'll just scribble something. I'll just do anything. And that way, if I get, you know, do well on it, I'll be happy. And I'll know it's because I'm so smart. But if I do my best and I hand it in and I don't do well on it, that's too threatening for me. So you'll see this with little kids but you'll also see it uh, profoundly with older kids, older teens and, and young adults. They really struggle with this effort thing. It's not unusual for gifted kids to be such extreme perfectionists um, that they'll either just do a terrible job on it just because they can't stand that process or they will not hand something in. They'll finish it and refuse to hand it in. It'll stay in their bag because they're too embarrassed, they're too mortified. Um, with the quality of that work. It's just too upsetting to hand that in and they'd rather get a zero. And no matter how you try to explain to them that it's better to get a low mark than it is to get a zero, they don't care. They're not going to do it. Um, they tend to be terrible worriers. They, they're what I call horizon thinkers. So it's not unusual for little gifted kids to lie in bed when they're four and wonder about life and death and what if I don't get married and what if I hate my job when I grow up. It's not unusual for them to worry about really, really big things. Um, they have often have very poor frustration tolerance. They'll think that something will be very easy and the second they can't do it, um, you'll, there'll be tears and screaming and yelling. It's impossible. It's too hard. Um, they have a lot of difficulty falling asleep. Uh, falling asleep, um, is really tricky for them. They, they have a, a terrible time. And, and one of the reasons is their brain is, I call it a Ferrari brain. It's an amazing brain, it's a fast brain, it does great things, but if you don't know how to drive it, you're gonna go in the ditch and the minivans are gonna go past you. Um, and when they're lying in bed at night, their brain is racing. They're just racing and they cannot turn it off. And I have lots of gifted kids that I work with that say, I just wish I had a button that I could turn my brain off so I could stop worrying. Um, one of the really difficult things about gifted kids is they have such potential and it's actually that potential that messes them up because they hear that all the time from people and they're often not living up to that potential. Some gifted kids are, but a lot of them aren't, particularly kids who are very strong verbally. 
they tend to be more of the worriers and the stressors. Um, and, and with that worry comes um, the, the brain, you know, can make all those amazing connections in the right direction when they get things and they understand things and they're electrified and on fire and excited when they're learning something. But that same um, momentum can happen in the opposite direction and they can worry and fall into a deep pit of despair like that. Um, so it's a very difficult brain to control. Um, they're also very misunderstood, these kids. They'll get labeled, and, and they could have these things, but they're often labeled you know, as oppositional defiant, um, being on the spectrum, all kinds of uh, issues, and, and they can be gifted and have those things, but often just plain gifted kids um, can display some of these behaviors to such a degree that it really looks like it's other things. Um, and it really, in, in many ways, is just a normal gifted brain. And these kids have to learn how to control their emotions and their brain so it doesn't control them. Um, and it's really, um, they're really difficult kids to parent. You know, I believe these are the kids that really will change the world one day. They really have tremendous potential, but they are often left behind by the kids who are in the average range, the high average range, or certainly the superior range because they're still kind of on that normal curve and work better in groups and they have a better relationship with effort and they have a little bit more grit. Um, gifted kids often uh, underachieve, um, you know, overthink everything. Uh, and as much potential as they have, there's um, a proportionate shadow to that potential. And so these kids are really, um, need to be parented in a very special way. They are quite at risk um, for having mental health issues. It's not, I'm not saying they will for sure, but they, they definitely are at risk for it. Um, and they're not particularly understood. Uh, I, I think we, at Connected Parenting, we really get them because the majority of kids that we work with are actually gifted. I would say a huge majority of kids are. So I've learned to sort of see these cluster behaviors and help parents with some really, really specific ways to help to parent their kids. So just really quickly in this podcast, if you want to find out more, you can go to connectedparenting.com or you can take a look at our online parenting series where it, that they re, it really does capture a lot of the techniques that are essential for parenting these kids and for understanding these kids. Um, although your child does not have to be gifted to, to do the parenting course, um, it will help parents of gifted kids and it will help uh, gifted kids. But a few things you can do is uh, staying neutral is really, really important. Um, if you've watched earlier podcasts, you need to be doing the mirroring, you need to be doing the baby play, connecting before correcting is huge. This particular group of kids will not respond really well to the mirroring in the moment. They will say, stop it, stop saying that. If you're um, clarifying mirroring, that's the mirroring where you're just like, okay, so tell me what's broken here. Like what didn't, what was it about this Lego that didn't work? And when you're picking a non-emotional detail, then it will work. If you're picking an emotional detail, it's almost like they're having such an emotional thunderstorm um, already that if you point out their emotion, it's gonna make it even worse. No matter how beautifully you know how to do the, the connected parenting mirroring technique, the calm technique, it will often backfire with these kids when they're upset. It will work spectacularly when they're a little bit upset. It works beautifully when you're just connecting and engaging and um, chit-chatting. And, and don't forget, that's the background mirroring that actually builds resilience and emotional organization. It's actually a really, really important tool. So I don't want you to misunderstand and think that you don't mirror here, you do. It just don't be surprised if it doesn't work very well when they're really, really agitated and upset. I would still do it. And then after two or three statements, you say, you know what? My presence in this conversation is not helping anymore. I don't think this is helping. I'm gonna give you a minute. I trust you, I believe in you. You've gone through stuff like this before. I'm gonna come back and check on you in a few minutes. And if they won't let you go and they're holding onto your leg, um, you just say, okay, so we're gonna wait. We're just gonna wait. The more you get into what I call a vortex, I talk about this more in my book and also in the course, but the gifted kids like to touch the bottom. It's like they like to go down and try out the worst possible case scenario, which is why they often say very dramatic things like I hate my life and I wish I wasn't alive and things that really scare parents and you obviously need to be aware of that and if you're really concerned then you need to take your children to the pediatrician or even emerge if they're saying really drastic things. Um, but it is not unusual for gifted kids to really pick this incredible language that really tries to capture how horrible they're feeling and a lot of gifted kids have told me um, that they cannot feel better until they have made their parent and it's usually their mom 
feel as awful as they feel. So we get pulled down to the bottom with these kids, which is terrifying and awful and exhausting. And the more you try to talk them out of it, the more they talk you into it. And actually it has this paradoxical effect. The more you try to say, but honey, look on the bright side. And it's not always gonna feel this way. The more you do that, the more they ferociously double down and uh, try to convince you how bad it actually is. And in the convincing of how bad it actually is, they get worse. So it's really important to be neutral. There really are very, very specific ways to parent kids like this. I would encourage you to look more into Connected Parenting, uh, at the very least the book, um, the, the parenting series for sure, or call us at Connected Parenting and, and, and work with one of our, um, our parent coaches, our family therapists. We work with clients all over the world and these kids are tricky. They are really tricky. Um, and they, it's like a roller coaster and they can be amazing and funny and interesting and precocious. Um, but they can also be exhausting. They can talk and talk and talk. And then if you try to say anything, you're interrupting me, even though they just talked for 15 minutes. Um, there's more, I mean, this is impossible in just a quick podcast to, to kind of capture my understanding of these kids. But if this has been helpful at all, follow up, check us out at connectedparenting.com. Um, and it, it's funny that a lot of parents are like, oh, I hope my kid's gifted. And I'm like, no, you don't. It's not always such a gift. I mean, it can be wonderful and there's lots of gifted kids who are well balanced and they do just fine, but a, a vast majority of verbally gifted kids, so kids who tend to be in the higher range, um, it, you have to be a, above the 98th percentile to qualify as gifted, but some gifted kids really tip the skills in the, in the perceptual area, math and spatial reasoning and um, that kind of thing, perceptual stuff, puzzles, mathematics. Um, and, and the kids who are really strong verbally or highly intuitive, very musical, you know, deep thinkers, um, not that the other kind of gifted kids can't be, um, but those are the kids that tend to just have these, these really, really intense emotions and these almost emotional thunderstorms or almost emotional seizures sometimes. It can be really overwhelming to parent a child like this and it's a huge responsibility. So um, if you wanna find out more, go to Connected Parenting. Um, these are the kids we, not all the kids we work with are gifted, but a lot of them are. And uh, they're not easy to parent. They're amazing, but they are not easy to parent. Hi, I'm Barrett Kaleri from Connected Parenting. 